tuning in this evening. Um, appreciate there's quite a lot of uh, sport on the scene as well. Um, so we're going to be finishing uh, by nine today. Uh, but as always, if you've got any questions or want to follow up on anything that we've talked about, then uh, please don't hesitate to, to get in touch. Um, so like last week, we've got myself and uh, Voita on the call. Um, and Voita's going to do some translating and add some uh, input as well. Um, and I'm just going to share my screen and then we'll, uh, we'll get going. Okay, so guys, first of all, yeah, thank you. Um, this presentation th this evening kind of, I guess, carries on from where we left off a few weeks ago now, uh, when we talked about quality practice um, and some skills that you can take onto the course to control your emotions a little bit and um, and try and control the way that we approach our decision making uh, when we're playing. So if you did miss that conversation a couple of weeks ago, then the recording uh, is or will be very soon on Bryson. So do feel free to go back and, and have a look at that. Um, but this evening's talk is really about um, a subject that I would say is, is undervalued in, in sports psych. Uh, and particularly for you guys as developing golfers, which is realistic performance evaluation. And I suppose what I mean by realistic performance evaluation is how good we are uh, versus how good we think we are. OK, so that's looking both on a on a wide level in terms of our overall development as as golfers. Um, but also on a much narrower scale, so in sort of competition um, day in, day out. And both of these things can have a huge impact on our um, motivation and our confidence, but also be limiting factors in helping us progress as players. So I suppose if we think that we're a lot better than we are, we can have a lot of confidence, a lot of self-belief. And on the flip side of that, perhaps if we don't feel that we're as good as maybe we are, um, you know, we can have low self-esteem. Um, and then on the other side of that, I think quite often if we think that we're better than we are, we perhaps don't put in the effort and the intensity in the training that we need to to push on uh, as developing golfers. So very quickly, I just want to look at kind of a few ways to um, kind of tackle that on a wider scale. Um, and the first one is really just being honest and open with yourself as players. You know, am I putting in the work that I need to? Um, where am I compared to where I think I should be? not being too hard on yourself, but being realistic about your performance, about your training, about your commitment to where you want to be. And as I said a couple of weeks ago, really trying to remember that your identity as a person is not defined by your golf performance. So I think a big thing that we need to do is separate the two who we are as people and who we are as players and making sure the two do not overlap. And really, most importantly, I think for you guys is, is finding someone you trust, whether that's coaches um, and parents, um, support staff, to be honest about the criticism of your own game. You know, I think a lot of people and when you get to where you guys are now as players, you know, there's a lot of people chiming in with maybe try this, do this, do that. You're not doing this well enough. And you need to be honest uh, with yourself and find someone you trust that you believe what they are saying 
is an honest criticism of your game and appraisal of your game as well. And accept what they are saying and take it on board. Okay. So for me, that's one of the key things there when we're looking at being realistic about evaluating our performance. So in terms of this evening, I guess what I want to consider and, and what realistic performance evaluation means to me when I'm thinking about competition and performance is how do I manage my expectations pre-round and during the round to allow me to better control my emotions during that round of golf? So what is a realistic good score? What's a realistic bad score? And how can I use that to ensure that I'm not fluctuating too much with my feelings and my attitudes? And then through good planning uh, and setting these expectations before we go and play, we then have the ability to effectively review this through performance which is going to have a positive impact on your training over a longer period of time. And, and finally, a, a really important one for me is how we achieve good performance by design and not by chance. So this is something that I'm going to take to the NTS uh, camps over the next couple of weeks. But for me, it's hugely important to understand uh, that you guys, and I've seen the scores, all have the ability to shoot great numbers when you go out and play. Okay, and what my aim is to understand is how we can do that more consistently by setting how we want to play the game and not reducing it to chance by going at pins that maybe aren't necessary or starting to let our emotions take over how we decide to go about what we're doing, okay? So to kick us off, I'll just give you a quick example of that. Uh, that is not my car, uh, but it is a 1991 Peugeot 205. And the purpose of that is really to just show how our behaviors and our attitudes and our feelings and our emotions on the golf course are so heavily linked into what our expectations are. So if I had never had a car in my life and I really needed a car to get to work, otherwise I'd have to walk 10 miles in the snow and somebody gave me this car, I'd be delighted, I'd be really enthusiastic about it um, and be very happy that I've got that car. Now, on the flip side of this, if I'd had a Ferrari for 10 years um, and then the Ferrari broke down and this is what I was given as a replacement, I'd probably be pretty disappointed and, and cross and, and a bit frustrated that this is the car that I've ended up having. And ultimately, it's the same car, but we're looking at it from two very different perspectives. This is just like what we get on the golf course. Um, we need to really frame our expectations when we go out and play golf to match the situation. So the course that we're playing, the conditions that we're playing in, and not just have a predetermined idea of what good is, because that tends to lead to our expectations not being matched with how we're then feeling, okay? So if I bring this into a, a golf context, I can come off the golf course and shoot a round of level par and be really happy with myself and my performance. Or on the flip side of that, potentially I can come off the golf course having shot four over and be really upset and angry. But in reality, both of those rounds of golf can be good or bad, depending on the context and the situation. Yet, 
it's my belief that we as golfers tend to naturally gravitate towards either our handicap or the par as determining what is good and what is not. And in my opinion, these are pretty irrelevant to performance and competition. And to give you a couple of examples of this, if I had a wedge into every single green in a round of golf and I shot par, I might come off the golf course thinking, oh, well, I've shot level par, this is okay. When actually, when I look deeper into it, something's going massively wrong there with either my wedge play or my putting that I've only shot level par with wedges into every single green. Okay, so if I'm not realistic about my evaluation, I'm missing a great opportunity to actually identify where I can then start to improve uh, my game. And on the flip side of that, we might have situations where, and I think this is particularly relevant to... Um, well, boys and girls golf, but when we're playing golf courses, maybe in age groups above, so we might be playing a, uh, a men's or a women's event at under 16s or under 18s, and the courses are much longer, suddenly we're faced with situations where we've got much longer approach shots into the green. And therefore, we might walk off the golf course having not scored as well and being frustrated but the length of the shots that we've had into the greens mean that, you know, a plus four or a plus five is actually a, a really respectable score given the situation. So if we are not setting ourselves up and understanding what is going to be a good score for the round, we can start to lose control when we're playing very quickly uh, and stops us playing by design and starts us maybe taking more risks uh, and increasing our bogey opportunities. So I guess, for example, uh, with there, we might be plus three through six holes, and we are just frustrated at the score because we're only thinking about the score and not the situation. And obviously, this can have a result in a lack of confidence. Our head goes down, we start sulking, we get angry, we lose our self-belief, when actually the situation is, you know, what we're doing is okay, okay? So it's really important that we are able to be able to set ourselves up and understand what is a realistic score or what is going to be a good expectations to have um, to both go out and compete, but also then evaluate our performance, okay? So the way that I look at it and what I'd really encourage you guys to start doing is taking this as a four-step process related specifically to a competition or a round of golf. And that is looking at our scorecard playing our practice round and using our course planner, looking at the pin positions, and then taking the conditions of the day. Okay, and I'll go through those one by one now. So, scorecard. Before we play where we're playing, um, I've got the Royal County Down scorecard here. For me, the first thing that I want you guys to be doing is starting to have a look at where are our potential in-position opportunities, okay? This is based purely on the distance and the length of the hole. And we don't forget that the in-positions we're talking about, right, where can I give myself an opportunity to hit the ball inside six metres? We know that this six metres is where 80% of your birdies are going to come from. Okay, so this is a huge number when we're talking about by design, all right? So what holes are gonna afford me the opportunity to be hitting the ball with inside six meters? And just for clarity, of course we can make birdies on any hole, but when we're talking about by design, we're thinking, right, outside 140, kind of when we get to 150, 160 meters, Realistically, those birdies are going to come more by chance. We might hit the middle of the green and hole a long putt, 
or we might be aiming at the middle of the green and pull the ball or push the ball closer to the flag and hole a putt. Okay, so I'd be looking at, right, where are those potential in position opportunities? And I've gone here off the white tees, uh, in position opportunities for myself. So I'm looking at the par fives. I'm going to have three approach shots there that are going to be relatively close to the hole. And then I've got one, two, three, four, uh, par fours and a par three, okay, where I know that I'm coming in with less than 140. So straight away there, I'm thinking, right, eight opportunities for birdie. What are we looking at? Maybe a 50% conversion, right? Okay, great. So the scorecard is the first thing to set ourselves up to understanding the golf course. Now, it might be, again, that the course is very, very short for what you're playing on. And we see this a lot. I would say in, in England, especially with sort of under 16s girls golf, where you know most of the players hit the ball a long way, but are playing off courses that are very short. So great opportunity for a lot of those in positions. Or it might be that you're playing a lot longer golf course and straight away there, we're seeing there's not that many opportunities out there today. Okay. So this is based purely on distance. That would be the first thing that I would get you guys to do. Scorecard. And then going through the course planner. Okay, so we've got now a situation where we get out on the course and play our practice round. That black line in the uh, course guide is where we thought we might be by looking at the scorecard. Okay. But now we're playing the hole or looking at the course guide, we can see those bunkers are in a prime position to eat the ball up and perhaps it's a layup hole. And now I've got a much longer distance. So those opportunities are maybe being slightly reduced. And then obviously our pin positions when we get the sheet, where are the pins placed for the distances that I'm hitting into the green? So on the left hand side there, you've got that pin tucked in the right front side of that green. And I'm coming in from say 130. And for that distance, I know that if I'm going towards that flag, that bunker is in play, okay? So now is a potential where I'm thinking, well actually, maybe that is not where I want to be aiming. And I'm going to be changing my aim point to hit more of the center of the green and moving away from that pin position. And yes, I'm reducing a bogey chance there, but I'm also potentially reducing that birdie opportunity, uh, but still giving myself a putt for it. So as we go through the, the scorecard, the course planner, and then the pin positions, we can start to identify possible birdie opportunities. Okay. And finally, the conditions of the day. Obviously, examples like 30 mile an hour winds can change the length of the golf course massively. No run on fairways, how tough the green complexes are, all can have an impact on what is a good score. So we need to really ask ourselves that after going through that process, what is going to be realistic for the day? And how am I gonna set myself up in the best way to provide me with these opportunities to score, okay? Without starting to have to take chances. And when we start to do that, we can start to move away from that kind of fictional par name or our handicap and look, what is going to be good for this situation? And if we can start to do that, not only can we then review our game better afterwards, but also we're going to stay much more in control of our emotions on the golf course. Okay, I've bogeyed that hole. Well, it's a tough hole and there's other opportunities coming later. So the more we can go through that process, and I'd really recommend as a kind of planning and preparation for your game, that is something that you go through every time to give yourself the best opportunity. Okay. Tak, dobrý večer. A zdravím vás již po druhé. A mé jméno je Vojtěch Dostál. Pokusím se zhodnotit a přeložit rámcově to, co říkal, to zmiňoval Harry. 
Přičemž ještě bych rád zmínil, že pokud byste měli jakékoliv dotazy, tak neváhejte kliknout buď na chat, který je vpravo, nebo respektive se nabízí vpravo, vpravo vedle videa, anebo na takové obrázky, kde je tam druhý hlinček, čtverec a kruh, a tam máte rovnou záložku dotazy. A dnes, jakožto první slide, respektive název celé prezentace, já, co vymyslel Harry, co udělal Harry, a jsou psychologické dovednosti pro výkonnost. A tato prezentace má zároveň návaznost na první workshop. A Harry zmiňoval, že pokud jste nestihli první workshop nebo jste ho nezaregistrovali, tak jeho záznam je k dispozici v Brysnu. A realistické zhodnocení výkonu. Rovnou tam Harry zmiňoval otázky ke zvážení, přičemž ty otázky jsou, jak dokážete ukočírovat vaše očekávání k lepší kontrole emocí během kola a jak dokážete dosáhnout požadovaného výkonu plánem, respektive vytvořením toho designováním vaší hry a nikoli šancí nebo náhodou. A a to rovnou jsou docela zajímavé dvě otázky. A k zodpovězení. Buďte, nebo zpětevé, první čtyři věci, které jsou důležité, vždycky, a na celé ještě apeloval hry jako, jako takové, vždycky k sobě buďme upřímní. Netlačte na sebe přes příliš, ale buďte realističtí, co se týče hodnocení potenciálních cílů. Pamatujte, že... Vaše identita jako člověka není dána tím, kolik zahrajete rán. A hlavně najdete někoho, ať už je to váš rodič, trenér, osoba blízká, která se vyzná v golfu, komu věříte a od kterých přijmete konstruktivní kritiku vaší hry. Hry také zmínil, že dle statistik, které jsou k dispozici pro něj, tak viděl, že dokážete všichni zahrát nízká čísla. A tady jde jenom o to, aby ty čísla se nosily častěji, aby byly stabilnější, aby tam nebyly takové výsledkové vlny, potenciálně výpadky. A očekávání propojené s naším chováním a přístupem, tak ta mysli si ještě pamatujete, tam hry dával krásný příklad vyfoceného starého auta. A jak stejná věc, dokáže, dokáže, nebo respektive dokážete mít v hlavě naprosto jinak podanou. Šťastný člověk, který nikdy neměl auto, tak to auto potřebuje, potřebuje k práci a je šťastný, že má tady tu starou oplískanou Felici nebo co to bylo, protože jinak by musel chodit 7 km denně tam a zpátky a i tady to auto mu ušetří čas. Druhý příklad, úplně z protipol, je frustrace, protože člověk, který měl Ferrari po dobu deseti let a to Ferrari se najednou rozbilo, tak dostal tady to v fulzovkách pořád oplískanou, oplískanou Felici a je z toho naštvaný. Takže stejná věc, záleží jenom, jak si ji podáte do hlavy a to jsou ty očekávání, které jsou propojené s tím naším chováním a přístupem. A Stejná věc, ale dvě velmi odlišné perspektivy. A ve finále je to stejné jako na golfovém hřišti. Potřebujeme přiřazovat naše očekávání k situacím, být adaptabilní k vzniklým situacím a nemít pouze v hlavě myšlenku toho, co je správný nebo co jsme si navrhli ještě přes hrou. A... Příkladově, můžu hrát hřiště v paru a být šťastný, nebo můžu zahrát plus čtyři a být naštvaný. A... Ve skutečnosti obě dvě ty rundy můžou být dobré ještě špatné, ale záleží na, kon, na kontextu a, té dané situace. A jsme zvyklí porovnávat naše kola k normě hřiště, což slouží jako determinace úspěchu či neúspěchu. A tyto ukazatele jsou ale poměrně irrelevantní, co se týče výkonu a soutěže, protože vedou k třem věcem. Ztrátě kontroly nad situací, a dávají nám stopku v hraní podle toho, co jsme si předem navrhli a více připouští hru na náhodu. Přijmí nás potenciálně hrát více riskantních rán, což potom logicky vede více k bogy. 
A díky tady těm situacím, když budeme brát více a více bogy, tak ztrácíme sebevědomí, hlava je dole a zase to jenom vede k dalšímu propadu jak výkonnosti, výsledku, tak k těm negativním dalším emocím. A jak se potom vytvoří realistické vyhodnocení očekávání potenciální výkonu a výkonu, tak to je, k tomu je zdaná potřebí čtyřkrokový proces. Jsou to čtyři věci. Hry tam zmiňoval skolkartu, cviční kolo, respektive potenciální a plánování hřiště, pin pozice a momentální stav ten den, ať už váš, nebo to hřiště, nebo respektive podmínek jako takových. A první slide, hry tam dával prezentace, nebo respektive skolkartu Royal County Down v Irsku. A první věc, když se podíváte na skolkartu, tak šance, jak zahrá Berdy, je víceméně podle dílky těch jamek jako takových. Pokud, je to, pokud jste pod 140 metrů, nebo respektive hrajete ráno do Greenu pod 140 metrů a platí potom 5% pravidlo, tak se dostáváte k potenciálně realistickému, realistické šance na Berdy, že jste v pozici, což je pod 6 metrů cca. A záleží potom na každém hřišti, jak je dlouhé, jaké jsou podmínky k tomu skórování. Takže příkladově, když budete hrát hřiště, kde hrajete jenom veče a zahrajete minus jedna a budete hrát pořád jenom veče do greenu, tak ve finále to skóre minus jedna není tak dobré v porovnání s tím, když budete hrát hřiště, který měří pro dámy ať už 5900, 6000 metrů nebo pro pány, pro chlapce 6800, 7000 Protože jste hráli pouze veče do greenu, tudíž jste si těch příležitostí měli vytvořit do toho berdy podstatně, do, do těch berdy podstatně víc. A místo minus jedna by to třeba mělo být minus čtyři, minus pět, minus šest. Takže jenom v zásadě na té skolkartě, nebo podle skolkarty, na kterou se podíváme, si vytipujeme, označíme si jamky podle vzdálenosti. Tady to tam potom zmiňoval, nebo respektive to tam bral víc do podrobná, se tomu teďka asi úplně... Nechci tolik vracet do podrobná, ale prostě pokud má jamka méně jak 350 metrů pro dámy příkladově, tak nebo 340, počítá se s drivem s tím, že zahrajete 200 metrů, že budete hrát po těch 140 metrů druhou ránu do greenu, tak ve finále tam existuje ta šance, že můžete být, nebo že byste měli být v té impozici pro to, abyste si vytvořili tu šanci zahrát takdy. A jako druho, druhý, druhý krok z těch čtyř je plánování course managementu, respektive ať už je to cvičné kolo, nebo přímo ten, a, ten plán po tom, co jste dohráli, dohráli cvičné kolo, jak hrát to hřiště, tak hry tam dával obrázek čtyřparů, kde byly v dostřelu nebo v dopalu nějaké fervové bankry, člověk buď bude hrát na layup, že se vyhne, že se vyhne těm bankrům, nebo potenciálně se bude zkoušet snažit je přestřelit, pokud je přestřelí, bude hrát krátkou ránu do greenu, díky tomu mu zase vzniká ta šance na vytvoření si berdy šance jako takový. Pokud nikoliv, a, jde spíš o to, aby, si, aby člověk měl vůbec šanci zahrát, zahrát a, pár jako takový a, a snížil to riziko toho potenciálního, potenciálního bogy. Na to konto máme rovnou další krok, předposlední, což je pin pozice. Hry tam potom měl dva obrázky, stejný návrat. Pokud hráč přemýšlí, takže bude taková vlajku, která je i hned za bankrem, tak hrozí riziko toho, že trefí písek, potenciální pře- jakoukoliv jinou překážku a díky tomu se snižuje, snižuje šance na to, aby zahrál nebo abyste zachránili pár. Zvyšuje se šance nebo pro, 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 probabilita toho, abyste hráli bogy. Pokud člověk bude mířit tak na střed línu, aby Vyautoval, vyautoval ze své hry písečnou překážku, teďka konkrétně, jak bylo na obrázku, tak sice se automaticky vyhne, vyhne tomu, že uh, nebude v pozici a snižuje riziko potenciálního bogy. Jako poslední věc, co zmiňoval čtvrtý krok, tak jsou momentální podmínky. Příkladově to může být vítr, velmi vysoký vítr, 30-40 km za hodinu, zima, prvé nebudou utíkat kvůli tomu, že je podmáčené hřiště. A 
buď, že to člověk se, se dobře trefuje z týčka s odpalištěm, nebo že naopak to netrefuje. Takže to zároveň i na vašem momentálním rozpoložení jako hráče, protože když budete hrát skvěle, bude to všechno trefovat, tak samozřejmě to skóre bude více méně, nebo by mohlo být nižší. A pokud třeba nedáváte zrovna ty paty, nebo to zrovna nejde, tak zase stejně budete naštvaní. Když to naopak, když budete hrát levá, pravá, strom, vodní překážka, vždycky to nějakým způsobem zachráníte, tak ten pocit té hry, nebo se respektive z toho skóre, bude úplně diametrálně odlišný. Oproti tomu, když člověk to dobře hraje, všechno rovně, ale třeba neskóruje. Takže ve finále má všechno impact na to vítězný nebo na to dobrý skóre. Tak a já dám teďka, se podíváme, jestli tady ještě někdo má otázku. Zatím ne. So hurry, it's up to you. Was that back to me, Vojta? Okay, thanks, Vojta. And uh, I guess moving on from this, what's uh, what's important to to understand or grasp? especially based on our conversations a couple of weeks ago, uh, that this is not the be end and end all from this situation, right? So we should not now be thinking, well, that was a hole I identified as a birdie and I didn't make it, okay? The importance of this is being able to then evaluate our round afterwards and give us a bit of a framework, but it shouldn't be used as a way to be thinking kind of where I am all the time through that round, okay? So we should always be thinking and being aware of, again, what the conversation was about a couple of weeks ago, that we can only control what we control, and this is our decision-making ability, uh, the processes that we go through, that we discussed, and our commitment, 100% commitment to the intention that we're trying to play. And this should always be at the forefront of our, our mind, really, um, when we are over the golf ball. But as I said, it does help us, at least with our strategy, when we're looking at how we're setting ourselves up and provide context to the situation and really understand where we might be limited on the day. Okay, And to give you a quick example of that, um, I've got some US Open cut scores so this is the men's us open so in 2018 17 and 2006 so 2018 the cut was made at plus nine 2006 it was plus 10 and and these are some of the best players in the world who regularly shoot four or five under par over two days to make the cut and i'm going to go back to a, a story quickly that I think I've said about 10 times now, but um, someone that was playing in the Open at Carnoustie and in the practice round, he was starting to think, you know, where am I going to make any scores and starts to get nervous and lose focus and start trying to be too aggressive at flags because he's thinking, right, I've got to shoot a number. And he was playing a practice round with Colin Montgomery, who said the, pl the cut would be around plus 10, he thought, for the tournament. And that completely reshaped and reframed how this guy went about his business. And the cut ended up being at plus 13 for that tournament. Okay, so we have to forget par and use the context of, of, of the, go the game that we're playing. And I think... One of the most important things for me is that we have to play golf uh, with clarity and focus, especially if we're trying to design our way around to consistently shooting good scores. Of course, we can be in situations where we decide we're going to go at every single flag. And on one day that might pay off, but on another day we might be plus eight or plus nine. Okay, so... We have to be able to design our way around and make our decisions without the influence of our emotions. Okay, and this is a really, really important factor because I would love to ask the question to you all now is like, how often are you playing shots on the golf course 
that are being decided by either the fact that you've just had a birdie on the last and you're feeling really good, um, and then you go and stick it in the bunker, or um, that you decide to be really aggressive because you've made a couple of bogeys, okay? So the purpose of this is not to be positive or negative or when we think about our game, aggressive or defensive, but it's just realistic and it gives us a much better benchmark of, of what a good score can be. But please don't come back to thinking uh, that that was a birdie hole and I didn't make it. It's an opportunity for a birdie, okay? But please keep going through the processes we discussed in terms of your decision-making and your commitment to the shot. So I've taken that same scorecard and just to reaffirm it, like what's missing on the card? It's difficult for me to ask questions to the group because I can't see any of you, but obviously it's the pars that are missing, okay? So use the length, use the decisions and, and the situation to determine what the par is for that situation. And the final thing on that is for me, especially with golfers that are, well, any golfer really, is that par, as in shooting level par or under par or over par, becomes such a limiting factor to what you can shoot. And speaking from experience, you know, starting to go low, as in under par, and you start maybe getting anxious about that or, or thinking I'm on for a really good score here, um, when actually the, the number is completely, in terms of the par, the number is completely irrelevant. We should be playing, right, is this an opportunity for an imposition? Okay, it is, right, can I put this within six meters? Can I convert the putt? And... And I think the more we can forget that pass score and use the situation, the better golfers that we're going to be on the golf course. So just to kind of summarize that, you know, for me, if we start looking at that personal par, we set ourselves up for what our score is going to be for the day. There's no fear of going low. It's just about playing what the course conditions offer. And it stops us thinking we're playing well when we're not. And this is more important for reviewing our performance afterwards. Shooting one under par, great. Is it good though? It might be or it might not. It stops us thinking we're playing badly when we're not. There may be no realistic birdie opportunities on that day. You've got 160 metres into most holes with some wind. Getting those pars is a good score. Maybe two, three over is a great score on the day. It stops us making our decisions based on emotions and it stops us then ruining our round based on that, starting to just take chances, take undue risks, attacking pins to make up the score. And it allows us to keep us in control of those emotions, stops us getting frustrated on the golf course, getting our head down, sulking, getting angry and just moving on. It is what it is. It isn't a case of, right, this is good, this is bad. It is just what it is. And like I said, it provides us a realistic evaluation of our performance. So taking away the, um, the in-round situations and looking kind of more about our development and our practice, if we don't understand these things that we talked about in terms of what is a good score, what the scorecard sets up, what the course sets up, We've got no real opportunity to reflect on what has happened and what we can improve on and take action on to get better. Okay, so this for me is a huge part of it, whether it's reflecting straight after our round or whether it's looking into what we need to do in the longer term, we have to be able to monitor how we're doing related to that golf course. Okay, and as I've said, it can have a big impact on our motivation in the long term. We're not shooting the scores that we think we're capable of. We're not shooting to our handicap. Well, actually, our handicap is based on the majority of events being played at our home club. And now we're playing a summer of events in national competitions in different countries away from home that are much longer. Okay, so we have to be realistic about this and the knock on on our confidence and our self-belief. Or 
on the flip side, which I think is very dangerous, is maybe we are playing a lot of club competitions and the courses are very short and we're shooting okay scores and suddenly we've got a really inflated sense of ego that we're much better than we are and the dangers of that for me are huge if we're coming off the course shooting one under but we've got short approaches into every green suddenly do we take our foot off the gas a little bit with our practice um, and and we're not making the steps that we need to to progress and push on because that's something we have to be doing constantly over a long period of time okay so that reflection for me is so important okay we set ourselves up we know what we think we want to do we've played our golf and now we reflect on that performance okay and and I think this is huge and something that's underdone. If I have a, a terrible round of golf in a tournament, okay, the first thing that you want to do when you finish is throw the clubs in the boot, go home and forget about it. But actually, that is the perfect time to go through what has happened. Okay, it's fresh and you've got the opportunity there to understand realistically, not based on emotions, why your score is what it is okay so for me that reflection you can make it quick you can make it simple okay and I think initially we're looking at birdies versus bogeys okay and I'm in red on the side there we've got our kind of CGF baseline targets to to be shooting on a regular basis as a national team player we have got to understand, okay, why have we made the birdies that we've made and why have we made the bogeys? So how many greens in regulation have we made that day? If we haven't made very many, of course we're not going to make so many in positions in the six meters. But why have we not hit those greens in regulation? Is it because we haven't been driving the golf ball well and have therefore got a lot longer shots into the green? Is it that we have been too conservative off the tee and have longer shots into the green? Have we not aimed ourselves correctly when we're hitting approach shots into the green? Have we not struck the ball well? Or have we simply been too aggressive at the flags and started missing greens even though we're striking it well? And the same for those in positions. Why? What's happened? Up and downs, have we hit our 50% mark of missed greens? If not, why not? Are we hitting them out of the rough and not practicing enough shots from the rough? Um, and how many converted putts? So for me, that reflection in terms of post round when we're finished, but also on a longer term by using the stats in Bryson, where am I with those stats? Because I know they are the key correlators to scoring. Um, where am I with those and what can I focus on to improve? because I'm being realistic about this. So again, when it comes back to those in positions or greens in regulation, you know, we might have said CGF baseline is 13 and that's what I want to hit that day, but the course might not have offered that at all. So actually, you just need to understand that. It's not a case of good, bad, right, wrong. It's just, it is what it is and we need to understand that to give ourselves the best chance to reflect and then take action to improve and a really good way of doing that is just by having a look at uh, two basic stats right in each of those what went well with that and then even better if what could I do better next time what can I take back onto the practice ground now to improve that okay so for me uh, that's the end of uh, kind of what I'm going to talk about this evening. I think we'll uh, we'll save the rest until the next uh, opportunity that we get next Thursday. Um, in terms of the key takeaways, go through that four-step process and see how it is for you. You know, if there's things that you don't agree with or don't fit with your how you think about the game then let's have a discussion about it. Let's have a chat about it and let's see how we can adapt and be flexible with that to meet your needs. Um, and then that reflection for me is so, so important. But if we can start to do this, 
we're going to be in a much better position combined with controlling our emotions on the golf course uh, to be shooting more realistic, uh, better scores and creating performance and scores by design and not by chance. Okay, so I'll pass you back over to Voita to wrap up, uh, but thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Tak, já zkusím teďka ve zkratce znovu přeložit. A Harry na začátek zmiňoval a vyprávěl hezkou historku ohledně, ohledně skóre jako takového. A neřekl jméno, a mě asi mi to teda taky zajímá, že se ještě potom zeptám. A vyprávěl historku z British Open kdy jeden jeho z účastníků hrál cvičné kolo a de facto vůbec nebylo, kde na tom hřišti skórovat. To hřiště evidentně bylo dlouhé, těžké, technické, foukalo a tak dále a tak dále. A byl poměrně ve stresu ten hráč z toho, že neudělá kat, že nemůže dát kat, protože nemůže skórovat, bude pouze hrát bogy, dabláče a tak dále a tak dále. A Hrál ve flightu toho, to cvičné kolo s uh, Klenem Montgomery a ta, právě se ho zeptal, uh, kolik si myslí, že bude, že bude kát a Monty mu odpověděl, že asi plus 10 typu je plus 11. Ve finále ten kát byl plus 14 dokonce, takže to byl evidentně silně, silně náročný nebo velmi náročný uh, turnaj. A díky tomu ten hráč se ale uklidnil ten kát dál. A víte, to potom bylo OK. Takže jde stejně pouze o to, v jaký kondici jste vy, v jaký kondici je hřiště, potenciálně potenciálně dalších 150 hráčů toho turné jako takového. A Harry potom ukazoval skorkartu, ve které něco chybělo. Chybělo v ní, chybělo v ní vypsaný, vypsaný pár jamek jako takových. A byla tam jenom pouze metry. Jak daleké, ty, ty odpoliště, nebo jak, daleko, jak daleké jsou ty jamky a nebyl tam uveden pár, protože ono to je ve finále úplně jedno. Buď máte tu šanci být v pozici, ať už to bude čtyř pár, pěti pár nebo tří pár, buď ty jamky jsou tak krátké, třeba když budete hrát nějaké klubové turné, ze kterých třeba budete hrát z kratších odpališť nebo nebo ty hřiště třeba nebudou tak dlouhé jako takové, tak pořád budete moct mít šanci hrát večima, pořád budete mít šanci hrát velmi nízké skóre, potenciálně přesně naopak. A k tomu potom slouží, ale hry zmiňoval osobní pár. Osobní pár znamená, že se to hřiště hraje v takových podmínkách, jak ji nabízí. Brání vám nebo nám možnost přemýšlet, že hrajeme dobře, když nehrajeme. Což příkladově může znamenat, že člověk hraje minus jedna, ale bohužel na hřišti, kde se hraje všude jenom veže. Nebo vám brání být frustrován v průběhu hry, protože pořád je to jenom o těch daných konkrétních podmínkách toho daného dne, jestli fouká jak se cítíte vy osobně a tak dále a tak dále. Zároveň vám ten osobní pár nabízí realistické vyhodnocení vašeho výkonu a pořád to hlavně můžete kombinovat s tím, že jediné, co vy můžete kontrolovat během hry, to je vy sami. Můžete kontrolovat pouze to, co můžete ovlivnit vy, ať už je to proces jako takový, nebo ten decision making, to, ta, nebo ten commitment, což znamená to přesvědčení o tom, že chcete tu ránu zahrát jako takovou. Mimochodem, ohledně commitmentu byl hrozně hezký, teďka nejen odpočím na vteřinku já, hrozně hezká reakce byla jeho horšla, teďka to se hrála ve svět, světová jamkovka, hrál semifinále s Viktorem Perezem, tuším, že, a zahrál takový chunk, takový snapuk doleva, na jednom čtyřparu to bylo. Chtěl hrát nízký knockdown šestkou železem, takový lehký fade a tu ránu totálně zoral. A jenom bylo hrozně hezky názorně vidět tady, on si tu ránu sám komentoval, že jenom pouze nebyl odhodlaný tu ránu zahrát tak, jak si ji vymyslel v hlavě. Takže 
To je jenom o tom osobním paru, co zmiňoval Harry. Poté ještě zmiňoval ten vodopád těch emocí, nebo respektive toho realistického vyhodnocení těho očekávání po hře, což znamenalo, nebo znamená, abyste brali v potaz to, že jste tomu dali všechno při tom tréninku jako, jako takovým, akceptujete skóre, které je, akceptujete to, že tam byly ty pary jako takový, a jakou to má potom jenom ten post round, nebo to, to vyhodnocení, tady to, to realistické vyhodnocení toho kola, tak to bude mít dopad na vaší motivaci, na, vaší, na vaše sebevědomí, na vaše vnitřní uspokojení a na to, na to co děláte, že děláte správně, nebo když to nebudete dělat úplně dobře, že například si budete říkat po rundě, přesně, že jsem dneska hrál fakt blbě, že to nešlo, jenom kvůli tomu, že třeba to číslo nebylo úplně dobré, tak automaticky se vám stráží vaše ego a potom to nebo respektive ne vaše ego jako takové, ale, ale vaše sebevědomí. A to potom nemusí úplně dobře nutně být dobré, protože když budete hrát čtyřkolový turnaj nebo v nějakém horizontu dalším, více turnajů za sebou, tak i když třeba skóre nebylo úplně dobré, tak pořád jste mohli dělat velmi dobré věci a jdem na vás, jak si vyhodnotíte po té hře to, co jste potom potenciálně pokazili. To reflektování je velmi, důle, velmi důležité. Že třeba po hře, tady to potom zmiňoval jako úplně poslední slide, a po hře se udělat bez emocí, jenom opravdu to, to realistické hodnocení sami sebe, berdy bogy, kolik trefených greenů v regulaci a proč, jestli jich bylo málo, nebo jestli jich bylo hodně, jestli to bylo dobrý, jestli to bylo špatný, jestli jste hráli agresivně, jestli jste hráli defenzivně, kolikrát jste z těch greenů v regulaci byli v pozicích a proč kolikrát jste se zachránili a proč, potenciálně nezachránili a proč, a kolik jste proměnili patů, kolik jste jich neproměnili, proč jste je proměnili, proč jste je neproměnili. Díky tady tomu krátkému vyhodnocení se vám potom do budoucna bude mnohem líp vytvářet váš trénink a budete se posouvat víc a rychleji dopředu. Já doufám, že jsem to přeložil víceméně až takž, a stihli jsme to krásně tři minuty před zápasem Slávě s Arzenálem fotbalového, to je spíš pro pány. A já mu děkuji za pozornost a podívám se ještě, jestli tady byly nějaké otázky, já jsem to žádné neviděl. Kdybyste měli jakékoliv otázky, kdybyste, nebo respektive ještě poslední věc, Harry ještě zmiňoval, zkoušejte to sami. Zkuste si, zkus, zkuste si udělat uh, ty čtyři, ty čtyři uh, kroky toho procesu, že si dá hrajete hřiště, nebo se že se podíváte na nejdřív na kartu, potom, že si, že si zkusíte udělat, a, že se zkusíte udělat a, ten course planner jako takový, pin pozice a pak ty kondice nebo the conditions, ty podmínky toho, toho daného dne jako takového, ať už, ať už a, vaše, jak jste se cítili, jak jste hráli, anebo nebo i mimo, co už vyjde neurodní, což je počasí a tak dále a tak dále. Kdyby vám to nefungovalo, což se může stát, tak zároveň je tady hry pro vás, že je, že je velmi otevřený k jakékoliv diskuzi na tady ty témata. To už je snad úplně všechno a já popřeju tímto hezký zbytek večera a snad se vám to aspoň trošku líbilo. Mějte se hezky, hezký večer, na Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great week. And we're not long to the start of the season now, guys. So uh, keep focused, keep positive. Tournament golf is just around the corner. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.